Kids Mill is the only authentic remaining covered bridge in Mercer County and is notable for its simple crisscross Smith Truss developed by Robert Smith of Tippecanoe City, Ohio. It begins to rain at Kids Mill, a story in itself. The bridges were covered uh, mainly to protect the main wooden uh, truss members from the elements, the snow and the rain. And an uncovered wooden bridge had a lifespan of 10 to 20 years, but a properly uh, covered wooden bridge had a lifespan of 40, 50, even longer years, as evidenced by this bridge. It was built in 1868, and here it is, still standing today. Kids Mill was bypassed in the 1980s. It no longer bears traffic. For the last stop in Pennsylvania, but hardly Pennsylvania's last covered bridge, we return to a classic style. Except that Banks' covered bridge is painted an unusual luminous white. The Banks' covered bridge in Lawrence County, Pennsylvania was built in 1889. It crosses the Neshanic Creek and uh, it is a typical burr arch truss style. Well worth the trip off the beaten path. West Virginia's rugged mountain valleys and wild rivers boast 17 standing covered bridges, most in northern counties. As vital transportation links, bridges are often battlegrounds during war. In fact, maximum load strength for covered bridges in the 19th century were calculated using the weight of marching troops in close order. Philippi Covered Bridge over the Tigert Valley River in Barber County is the most visited historic bridge in West Virginia, built when the state was still part of the Commonwealth of Virginia. Emory Kemp is retired professor of civil engineering and founder of the Institute for the History of Technology and Industrial Archaeology at West Virginia University. Dr. Kemp designed the restoration of this bridge and more than a dozen others from New York to New Orleans. This is the Philippi Bridge completed in 1852. It was the scene of the first skirmish of the Civil War. Confederate forces occupied the bridge. Union forces came up on this lofty ridge over here and uh, fired onto the rebel position. And they retreated hastily down Main Street, which is just over here. And they were derisively called by their Union forces as the Philippi Races. West Virginia's pioneering covered bridge builder, Lemuel Chenoweth, designed Philippi and nearly 20 others. The story goes that he won the contract by standing on his model of the trusses before the Virginia Board of Public Works. Chenoweth built Philippi to last, but it was nearly destroyed by devastating accidental fire in 1989. Emory Kemp used the original specs to restore this unusual double-span, double-lane, 300-foot bridge. It's a very notable bridge, and the workmanship is outstanding. Barrickville, another Chenoweth bridge, was built in 1853 with a burr arch. It crosses Buffalo Creek in Marion County. During the famous Jones Raid during the Civil War, nearby mill owners convinced the Confederate general not to burn down this bridge. It survived, part of the 19th century turnpike system, but is now safe from traffic. It's never been reinforced, so it remains an outstanding example of a Theodore Burr truss bridge. Emory Kemp is a collector of rare 19th century tools. We have found, particularly on the bigger bridges like this one, that some of these hand tools are the most efficient way to do the restoration work. Also in Barber County is lovely Carrollton Bridge, built in 1856 over the Buckhannon River. The bridge has been reinforced to carry heavy coal trucks, a concrete contrast to its delicate decoration. This star-shaped logo uh, is very reminiscent of Pennsylvania rather than the Virginias. One of the outstanding features of this bridge is the stonework done by Emmett O'Brien. 
O'Brien also had done the stonework for Philippi Bridge to the north. The stone was quarried locally and obviously brought here by horse and wagon. It's laid up dry with no mortar. This is a particularly fine example of stone masonry that was used repeatedly on covered bridges. Perhaps no covered bridge in West Virginia expresses local craftsmanship better than Indian Creek Covered Bridge in the southern part of the state, Monroe County. Many of the covered bridges were built by unschooled builders. This one is rather unique in that these were teenagers, and that's probably its most notable feature. The Weichel brothers, as they told it later, had recently invested $10 each in a portable sawmill against their mother's advice. They were only 15 and 18 years old, after all. Soon after, the boys bid on the Indian Creek Bridge contract and actually won. They built their bridge with a simple howl truss. It was 1898. The bridge was built along the ancient north-south Seneca Indian Trail. It no longer bears traffic, but for decades, has been the picturesque destination for visitors from nearby Salt Sulphur Springs Resort. Virginia has eight covered timber bridges still standing. Five are preserved as public landmarks. Three are on private land. Leola B. Pierce has tirelessly documented their colorful histories and precise dimensions in her book, Covered Bridges in Virginia, Nine Old Ladies in the Slow Lane. Since publication, the ninth covered bridge has been destroyed by flood. Leola Pierce's own life warrants a book, too. She served as a Marine, worked as a spy, a design draftsman, transportation engineer, and is co-founder of the Covered Bridge Society of Virginia. Meme's Bottom Covered Bridge on the North Fork of the Shenandoah River in Shenandoah County was the one that first inspired Leola Pierce to pursue covered bridges. I have been so used to working on state concrete modern day bridges. And when I first came up here, I couldn't believe it. Here's all this traffic coming over and it was a timber bridge. And I became really fascinated and changed all my plans and went south. I mean, I stopped at every covered bridge. Meme's Bottom was built in 1894 with a burr arch by John Woods as a link from a private farm to the main road. At 203 and a half feet, Meme's Bottom is the longest timber covered bridge in Virginia and the only one still bearing traffic. 